One of the major questions that we ask with series is, does it converge or does it diverge? And in this course, we're going to develop a long series of tests that try to answer that question, that give us conditions on whether it's either going to converge or whether it's going to diverge. In this video, we're going to see our first of those tests, and it's called the divergence test. The claim is this. At minimum, we must have that the individual terms, the ANs, the, the terms that the series is built of, those must go to zero in the limit as n goes to infinity. If that is not the case, if you do not have the ANs going to zero, then the series is going to diverge. Let's suppose for a moment that that was not the case. Indeed, that the limit as n went to infinity of the ANs was some other number like, say, 1. It could be any other number that you liked or L, just not 0. So then in my series, where I'm adding up a whole bunch of terms, as n gets large enough, I'm effectively just adding a term that's more or less 1. I'm adding a term that's more or less 1, then another term that's more or less 1, then another term that's more or less 1, and so on down the line. If this is the case, if, if my terms all go to 1, then it's just like the series of adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, in other words, if, if I take the series n equals, well, maybe it doesn't start right at the beginning. Maybe it starts at some big value n. Some, some, it takes a while before the limit starts getting close to 1. Maybe it's very different from that for a while. But, but eventually, this a n is just going to look like, well, it's approximately 1 plus another number that's approximately 1 plus another number that's approximately 1 and so on down the line. I keep adding numbers that are approximately 1, and so this thing is going to diverge. Now, of course, this is a sort of weird notation, and I'm not being mathematically rigorous here, but that's the idea. If I'm always adding a, a number that's more or less a constant, it's going to keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger forever. We have to be very careful about not just what this particular theorem is saying, but more importantly, what it's not saying. As in, this is one direction. It's that if the ANs go to zero, then it converges. But it's not the other way around. But it's not the other way around. If the ANs go to zero, that doesn't tell you whether it converges or diverges. It, it has to go to zero if it's going to diverge. But if it does go to zero, it tells you no information at all. Yes, it's true. The terms get smaller and smaller and smaller. But there's still infinitely many of them. And we don't know which of those two factors dominates. It's the fact that there's infinitely many things being added which tends to make you think it's going to be large, dominate? Or does the fact that the things that you're adding get really, really small dominate? We do not know. So this particular theorem is useful for telling us something that diverges, but it's completely useless at proving something converges. It can only prove something diverges. There's an analogy here with integrals. You'll recall that a integral is the area under the curve, and an area under the curve can be thought of as sort of a sum, but the, the sum that represents area is usually done with either a right approximation or a left approximation, and then you take some limit as the number of approximations go to infinity. So integrals and sums are, are very related. And when we talked about integration, we might draw a, a picture like this. We might say, okay, we've got some function that comes down like this. And if it was the case that the, the area underneath the curve, which is all of this stuff over here, if it was the case that that area was a, going to be a finite number, it had to be that the original function got small, because it, we were going to have this sort of infinite width to it. So if we were going to have this infinite width, it must have been the case that you don't have a function that's big. The function itself has to go to zero in the limit as x goes to infinity. But now if I'm going to do a series, it's almost the same thing. It's just that a series is just a sum of different points at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on down the line. But the same story must be true. We, if we're going to keep on adding stuff, the things that we're going to add better be equal to 0. So let's see a specific example. I have some sum here. Uh, it's some messy expression I don't know how to deal with. And then the question is, is it convergent or is it divergent? So I'm going to take this, the ANs. If I just look at the AN, this is going to be equal to e to the n over e to the n plus 2 plus 1. And what the divergent test tells me to do is to look at whether the limit of this thing, as n goes to infinity, is or is not going to be equal to 0. Well, I think I can clean this up a little bit. I'm going to divide the top and bottom by e to the n. So I'm going to say 1 on the top. e to the n plus 2 minus e to the n is just going to be equal to e squared. 
and then plus 1 over e to the n. And now if I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity, if I come along and I take the limit as n goes to infinity, that's my sort of shorthand to draw an arrow over top of it. Well, the e to the n goes to infinity, so 1 over e to the n goes to 0, so I'm just left with 1 divided by e squared. And this result is very much not equal to 0, and so by the divergence test, I'm going to get that at divergence. The terms do not go to 0, and hence it must diverge.